Paros. So we went to Paros, and you know, I didn't know we weren't in Paros, and we adored it. We had the most fantastic time. We went to a tiny tourist office and said, where do we stay? And they said, we give you two rooms. They were pennies, they were nothing. We stayed with the most divine woman yeah. who looked like, um, I mean, she looked like Jeanne Moreau, we called her Jeanne Moreau. In the morning, we'd go down to the harbor and sit there and have yogurt with honey on it and lovely strong black coffee before we stretched out in the boiling sun and went pitch black. Those are the days before we were nervous about sunshine. <laughs> life got busier and busier and busier and I wondered if I would ever get back to Greece and my husband and I were invited by Kylie Jacob Rothschild, Jacob Lord Rothschild, who's got the most beautiful home in the northeast of Corfu and we went out there to stay with him. It is so unbelievable to go to Corfu. You sail across from the from the town of Corfu, across that gorgeous sea shape, across up to where he was. And sailing there, I was just looking at him with my husband, he'd been to Greece before, and just saying, this is it, this is why I feel I'm coming home. From his place, you could see across into Albania and to Butrint, recently excavated by him and Lord Sainsbury. Which is, and this is where the passion comes in, in Butrint, all those millions of years ago, the news has broken that the only God who has ever died, his death was announced in Butrint. The sailors sailed into Butrint and said, the great God Pan is dead. And the women washing their clothes dropped things and began to sob and cry. Well, I'm hooked, I'm hooked on Greek mythology. So going across with Lord Rothschild to Ioannina in Easter time, and going to the Easter celebrations up in a tiny village far, far up beyond Yamina, which is right up towards the Albanian border. Mountainous, mountainous. <coughs> and at midnight on Easter morning, midnight in the church, it was pitch black. One light from the altar is spread out. Everybody's got candles. Gradually it spreads through the church. Gradually from outside the church, out into the village, down the streets. Everybody's holding fire there. And you start with soup, a kind of soup with eggs in it. You break the fast. That's exactly it. And then the next day, everywhere, there was the smell of roast lamb and people just talking and celebrating and saying Happy Easter to each other. If you went to Greece, where would you go first? Of course, you go to Athens, but you might go to Thessaloniki. My God, did I leave my heart in that city, apart from falling in love with the mayor, which I think everybody did. <laughs> It is a student city. It is phenomenally beautiful, immensely historic, but it is a buzz with life. It is full of cafes and cocktail bars. It's got some of the best cocktail, the, when I was there, the best cocktail maker in the world was in Thessaloniki, teaching us how to make cocktails. But you're a spit and a hop away from Mount Olympus. And if you want to know where the gods lived and where the muses were, go down to the valley where the muses were. The nine muses, I expect you can say all their names, darling. No, you can't, no, not can I. I tried to remember them for today, but I couldn't. The nine muses live in a deep, deep valley with the most beautiful stream running through it. And I went to try to talk to the muses, and they said you must pat the water first so that they won't be alarmed. They will hear the pat of the water, and they won't fly away. Beyond! 